Ladies and gentlemen, bonjour à tous, welcome to everyone. With Cyril Arnaudou, Patrick Rennie and myself Stéphane Auriol, we will present the architecture and ground concept of operations for a two-stage to orbit using Sabre engines and launch from the European spaceport in French Guiana. First of all, let me give you a few words of introduction. And you should know that in uh, 2018, the French Space Agency, UK Space Agency and Reaction Engine, we initiated a cooperation and it is still ongoing together with Alcadia and the French Aerospace Lab on ERA. We will present here the main findings of this cooperation concerning the Sabre engine and its implementation into a vehicle two stage to orbit and also the ground concept of operations. Hello everyone. My name is Patrick Rennie, and I'm going to cover the Reaction Engine's contribution to this study. So Reaction Engines has spent over 30 years developing an understanding of the Sabre propulsion system and potential launch system architectures to accommodate it, and have contributed this understanding to help guide the study. In particular, Reaction Engines provided key information on the Sabre engine, including a description of its functional characteristics, as well as mass and performance data to undertake trajectory modelling and key trades. In addition to this, the technology development roadmap and cost predictions were shared to provide a view on overall programme feasibility. To give some context behind the Sabre propulsion concept as utilised for this study, I'll give a brief overview of the engine. Sabre is primarily a rocket engine, which is required, of course, for exoatmospheric flight. However, unlike a pure rocket, Sabre has the capability of using atmospheric air as its oxidizer during the initial phase of the ascent trajectory and achieves this in a single integrated design. Replacing the oxidizer that would normally be carried on board the launcher provides the weight saving required to incorporate systems that enable reusability, such as wings, control surfaces, and undercarriage. Incorporating these aircraft-like systems allows for greater operational flexibility, vehicle reliability, launch cadence, and abort strategies, moving toward practices that are already well established in the world of aviation. The mission analysis was carried out in parallel, both by ONERA and reaction engines, under a common set of assumptions, notably a two-stage to orbit architecture comprising a reusable Sabre-powered first stage and expendable upper stage operating from Guiana Space Centre. The mission objective was to deliver a 15-ton payload to 400km low Earth orbit at 5.2 degrees inclination, with full abort and payload recovery throughout the first stage ascent. Reaction Engines applied its experience from the SSTO Skylon vehicle to examine the challenges and opportunities of a two-stage orbit operational concept. A key aim of the study was to investigate the level of mass margin available to the reusable first stage, which could then be utilized to reduce the technical demands on the vehicle by reducing performance and or increasing the structural mass. Some of the key trades were investigated, such as staging velocity and altitude, as well as the feasibility of re-entry and the implications of downrange landing versus returning to the launch site. The study findings confirm that the Sabre-powered two-stage to orbit launch vehicle architecture is feasible and achieves the primary target mission of 15 tonnes with a generous mass margin for the first stage. This margin is between 26% and 53%, dependent on the mission parameters and upper stage propellant selection. The vehicle operated within industry standard payload environment constraints, such as a strict 2G lateral load limit. Additionally, both nominal mission and abort capability for the payload is achievable using either downrange recovery or return to launch site operational strategies. Equivalent payload performance for a variety of orbits, including GTO, International Space Station and polar inclinations were determined. An additional and interesting outcome of the analysis was that the first stage, despite being optimised for a two-stage orbit system, still maintained a positive mass margin when operated in a single-stage orbit capacity. Importantly, the analysis performed by ONERA and reaction engines used independent methods and tools. However, we arrived at broadly the same conclusions, as reported in the 2019 UCAS paper highlighted. OK, I'm now going to pass over to Alcadia, who are going to comment on the ground segment operational concept developed during this study. In the last three slides, we will discuss the methodology 
used to define the ground up operational concept. This was a three step work. The first step is a system analysis, a functional analysis, uh, in order to define the requirements for the ground segment. The second step consisted in uh, defining all the hypotheses in order to draw the general outline of the project. As we're still in the early phases uh, of the project, many elements are not yet defined, but still we needed to set up some work hypothesis to um, put some boundaries and um, define some um, elements. The third and last step was to address all the operational phases of the ground segment life. Uh, this analysis helped us to assess the ground mean required and uh, to define their associated costs. We'll discuss here the main hypothesis driving the ground operations. The first integration of the launch vehicle, as well as the launch operations uh, themselves, will be performed in the French Guiana uh, on the Guiana Space Center. The first stage with which uh, is a highly reusable stage, will return to the launch site and will be a horizontal takeoff and landing system. We still have some important hypotheses uh, pending and they especially concern the automated operations and their timing. The functional analysis and the hypothesis we defined previously led us to the definition of the operational concept. This is what you can see on the funny schematic on the right side of your screen. Um, this schematic has been purposely low detailed in order not to represent any technical solution, which is very early in the project, too early in the project. The schematic is a result of the functional analysis and has helped us to define functional areas, not physical areas, because we're not sure at the moment where we will uh, put these facilities within the, um, the CSG layout, but only functional areas. And based on these functional areas, we defined um, our cost estimation. So Patrick and Cyril showed you how fruitful this cooperation has been so far. And I think this is a very good reason to go on and involve a broad range of industrial expertise. And that's what we're going to do. And we will undertake a further degree of fidelity about the launch service requirement, operational concepts, preliminary design for first and second stage, the business case, because business is business, and development opportunities and early operating concepts. Thank you for your attention.